Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me here today. So I am doing a reaction video for you guys and I'm finally giving in and I'm giving in to your requests and I am doing a reaction to John McLean. So here's a reason I've been holding off is because John McLean is a makeup artist. I don't react to professional makeup artists because um, usually there's nothing to critique at all. Um, and I am a fan of John McLean. I watch John McLean's video. There's probably not gonna be that much in this video, if anything. I feel like we're gonna learn some things. So just before we get into this, if you guys don't know who I am, if this is your first time, um watching me then hi my name is Robert I'm a professional makeup artist here on YouTube and also in real life meaning it has been my paid professional profession <laughs> for the last 12 years I'm quite new to YouTube I haven't been doing it for that long but it's my goal here on YouTube to help you become a pro yourself or just someone who's really good at makeup and sometimes that means separating what we see online versus reality and how achievable and how realistic that can be some people may watch this video and say there are no rules to makeup and that's absolutely fine individuality and creativity have no rules However, makeup does have a theory. And so these videos are for people who are interested in learning that theory or just like to watch videos like this. So if that sounds like something you would be interested in, then please consider subscribing. Okay, let's just get straight into it. So I chose this one because it's something that has recently come to kind of light and everyone's been calling it like the foxy eye. Here's the thing with makeup and trends. They come back around over and over again. And at the moment you see a lot of trends that are actually just old makeup techniques that are coming to light are coming like you know general knowledge so it's really great to see that but um I get a lot of questions asking me what do you think about this trend what do you think about this trend and really it's like it's been around for years there's nothing really to think about it because it's something that works sometimes unless it's five minute craft so this is John McLean doing the Bella Hadid cat eye tutorial which has literally come around as like foxy eye or something like that so we're gonna watch how it's done just so you guys know everything I'm wearing on my face today I will link in the description box below all right let's go Yow. Hello everyone. So in today's film I'm going to be creating a look for you very inspired by a look that I saw worn on Bella Hadid recently. As photos of Bella appeared on my Instagram suggested section very recently and I absolutely adored the makeup that she was wearing. I don't know who the makeup artist was but I shall definitely leave the applicable links to the exact photographs within the description of this film. Now the look itself actually didn't have a lot of colour. It was quite glowy in some of the photographs that I saw in other ones it looked quite matte. However, the overall look was very sculpted, yet very softly done. The eyes themselves were very elongated. Of course, Bella has beautiful upright eyes. However, the eye makeup itself was quite simple. It was quite a strong liner on the top lash line. Nothing on the underneath, just a, probably a tiny little bit of eyeshadow on the underneath of the eye. And from what I believe, there was false lashes on the look. The overall eyeshadow for the look as well almost had a blunted blend, but that is what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be creating a look that's brown of the eyelid, has a slightly blunt blend to pull the eyes out. Nothing on the underneath of the eye, not even mascara, maybe just a little, but lashes and a liner. So the look is very simple yet quite that's really nice to see someone break down a whole makeup look. It's really interesting to watch things like, have you ever, I can't remember what channel it is that does that series where it's like a historian breaks down Titanic's costumes or something like that. And they go through every little tiny bit and, and like um, talk about why it's relevant, you know, what compare it to back in the day. So it's really nice to see a makeup artist saying like, this is the look and explain it each little bit that they can see and each little bit that they can pick out um so you can understand it better um i really like that i might try and start doing that in my videos because i think you just kind of assume that everyone can see what you see when it comes to anything you know and um, i think we all see things differently and we all kind of break things down differently so that's that's a good thing to see quite glamorous for this evening i'm going to be going to a party i have already put on my outfit and i have primed my skin today with la cream concentrate by ember release i'm sure for my regular viewers you are very familiar with that product i also went in with another very familiar product kat von d's locket foundation in the shade light 42 as well as cryolan's dermacolor cream concealer in the shade d1w and then I went in with Kat Von D's Locker Concealer in the shade L1 Neutral, just to add further coverage. I set it all through with a Cryolan Dermacolor Weatherproof Loose Powder. Then I applied MAC Cosmetics Studio Fix Powder Foundation in the shade NW10, just here and there, just to color correct. 
Over the top of that, I then added some highlight to the face, just a matte highlight with MAC Cosmetics Studio Fix Powder Foundation in the shade Shivering White. Then for eyebrows, I of course went in with some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Omega, which is fantastic for doing a stencil, and that's what I used it for. Then I went in with a little bit of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Concrete and just sketched very lightly and very almost quite unneatly little hairs just to add a little bit of definition and the illusion of natural hairs throughout the eyebrows. So to begin... So let's talk about um, d using different um, shades and textures through the brows. John's eyebrows here look very... Um, I mean, they're not to everyone's taste at the moment. Everyone loves a good thick eyebrow, but they're very structured, really, really... They have a really a beautiful fade going light to dark, and they look like brows because of the different techniques and the different colours and tones and um, products. On people who have very fine brows, whether you have blonde hair or whether you're slightly mature and you don't have very strong eyebrows, it's always nice to use different colours and different textures because it adds a sense of dimension. So instead of it looking like a block brow and f looking flat, it's really nice to have this multi-tonal, multi-textured brow. I really like to use um, a brow pen um, first to sketch out some little brows, something like that, and then a powder to kind of do like an underlying shadow, um, and then a lighter powder at the front to make more dimension. If you have no brows, you need one, two or three products minimum, I think. But these look incredible. To begin with, I'm going to go in with some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Omega. Again, this is a marvellous eyeshadow, I use it all the time. Now, in the look that I saw on Amiga, if you have that kind of tone, if you have very fair skin, like John McLean does here, it's a perfect kind of like contour mixed with something that's a little bit more pinky. It's such an incredible shade just to sculpt out the um, sockets or um, define the cheekbones. If you don't support MAC as a brand, take a look at that shade and see if you can find something similar because it's, it's incredible. Bella. The eyeshadow was just one tone. It looked like it was just one tone. So first of all, we're just going to go in with the Omega on a MAC 239 brush. I'm just packing that onto the eyelid. Now, one technique that I thoroughly recommend, and it's a technique that I use myself personally, because I tend to apply my foundation, my concealer, and my powder before going in with eyeshadow. This technique is fantastic. However, sometimes you can have fall down in the eyeshadow when applying eyeshadow. And for those of you who are unaware of what fall down is, it's when you're applying a powder eyeshadow, typically, or a glitter, and you're applying it to the eye, but little specks of the product start to appear on your cheek. They fall down off the brush or sometimes off the eye. This can create a really murky effect. And of course, when your skin is as pale as mine, you can see it visibly, especially if you're going in with either a glitter or a black eyeshadow. So one technique that I like to employ to prevent this is to actually tilt my head down and look into a mirror, but apply it looking down. That way that the fall down will fall off my face, not onto my face. And then what I'm going to do is just almost start to pull. So that to me is a much nicer technique than packing loads of powder under the eye. John has already done concealer, powder, foundation. So to have excess powder put on top, it does change the texture of the foundation um, and the concealer. So even if you are brushing it away, it still changes it up. So if you don't want to change up that um, texture that you've already set and lay down, this is a really great way to kind of um, help that. Pull the shade out, but I'm still always keeping it within that alignment. So I'm just pulling the shade upward and outward from midway in the eye. So it's midway within the eye beginning to just sweep it upward and outward. And then with a clean MAC 217 brush, I'm then just going to begin blending it. If you struggle to get your blend absolutely perfect and you're going in again with another clean blending brush, trying to get a clean blend, you can actually take a softer colour or a colour slightly lighter than the one that you have applied, just to soften the edges of what I've applied to the Omega, more on the inside of the eye. I want the outer part to be slightly harsh. And I'm taking a little bit more of that Omega on the back of my hand, first of all, just so that we have no excess. I'm just starting to pull it. Now, I'm not going to pull it from the wing. I'm going to pull it more from the center part of the outer eye, if that makes any sense. So more from here outward, rather than from the initial side. I don't want it to be cut too severely, certainly not yet. But if you have patchiness anywhere, but you don't want to apply a great amount of it again. 
just stipple on the color. I feel like this is how you can tell you're watching a makeup artist is that we just got like how many tips? It, what? How many minutes was that? Like one minute? <laughs> like tip after tip after tip that all work, that was, all comes from experience, that all comes from um, quite in-depth knowledge as well. And you can tell that it comes from experience. Um, just, just had to put that in there. I'm wanting to draw a line first of all, just to place it. What I'm doing is just drawing upward. So it's just at the side of the eye that I'm drawing it. As you can see, that's where I'm going to place it. So it's almost after the eye and outside of the eye, but it draws from the eye outward. It's almost following the lower lash line up and outward. That's such a great technique for liner in general. A winged liner, if you say, let's have a hooded eye or um, you don't have as much space, although John McLean has this much space to kind of follow this bottom waterline to get the perfect even kind of wing on each side of the eye is an amazing amazing trick where it's placed here where it's slightly outside and down it's going to give the most amazing like sultry eye it's going to look beautiful now of course i said i wasn't going to apply any sort of product to the lower lash line but this wouldn't necessarily be visible as it's just going through the lower lashes it wouldn't really have that much of a distinctive presence what this does is just connect what you're applying on the top and the bottom together so that it doesn't look so out of place I think that's a really good um, kind of tip in there as well for um, eye makeup where you kind of want to change the shape of your eye but you don't want it to be over the top. If you usually think of like cat eyes as dark and pulled out because everyone's calling it like a fox eye but it, it's a cat eye. Bear in mind when you're doing um, eye makeup and even makeup on the whole face, Think about tones versus color and shade and light versus color. Although this is a brown, it does kind of have, it's more of like a shade of color. So it's almost like contouring around the eye, if that makes sense. So you can take a dark brown through the socket without it making it look like, like if we look at this now, it looks like we've contoured the eye. It doesn't look like color. You don't look at that and think, oh my God, what so much eye makeup. But at the same time, it's so effective. Even that, even that little tiny bit of liner, look how effectively that pulls up and out the eye. Looks incredible. Um, so bear that in mind when you don't wanna do too much makeup, but you still wanna have something like done. Think about how you sculpt your face. You can also do that sculpting your eyes. Now, the reason that I'm applying this color, even though I didn't really want to have anything on the lower lash line, is just so that we give the eyes a little bit of definition but because it is a satin tone, it won't look as harsh or as solid as a matte tone. I'm just going to... Con That's another thing. Again, texture um, finish can create a whole different look, if that makes sense. This is so nice to watch. I mean, I've watched John McLean's videos before. I haven't watched this one in particular. So it's really, really nice to watch something that's so in-depth and educational. Educational, tutorial... I think it's it's just in incredible. And then to apply some mascara, I'm taking the Balm's What's Your Type Mascara, a classic favourite of mine. And I'm just working that into the roots of the lashes first of all, just so that we can get the eyelashes looking really dense and just really wobbling it at the roots of the lashes. Mm, that wobble and shake technique in, in mascara in general, if you guys find that your lashes clump together and you do mascara and you look like you have two lashes, do you know what I mean? That wobble, zigzag and roll at the same time is the best, you kind of want to and then roll upwards like this. It's the best mascara technique, especially like John's saying here, build it up at the root of a lash and you can get these really dense lashes, really nice dark lash line. Um, and I sometimes find that can actually help lashes stay curled. I don't know how. Now today I'm not going to apply any mascara or product to the lower lashes. So I'm going to keep the lower lashes quite bare. So I'm taking a Q-tip or a cotton bud, however it is referred to in the region that you are in, and I'm just going to brush it through the lashes just to make sure that we take off any of the excess that has started to land on them from the top, which is kind of... Another thing I noticed as well is that, so John mentioned at the beginning, we're not putting any product on the bottom of the eyes, then puts mascara on and it transfers to the bottom lashes. This is a really nice thing to include in um, a tutorial is not a mistake, but how to fix something that's not meant to be there. And I think that's something we don't see a lot. A lot of it is fixed off camera because they've said we're not gonna do that. So I'm not gonna put it in my video. I always find if you're training to be a makeup artist or you, or you, you know, are doing makeup on someone, 
you are more trustworthy if you point out your mistakes. If you put on a foundation that's too dark for someone and they're like, oh, it's too dark. And you're like, no, no, no. You seem really unprofessional and not no, like, and like you don't know what you're doing. Whereas if you're like, totally, if you point out yourself, can you see it's too dark? This is because of this, this, this. You're the professional. You're the one who, you know, is, is um, fixing the mistake and pointing it out before that person can. It's okay to make mistakes. Everybody, every single person, whatever profession you're in, no matter what level you're in, makes mistakes, still makes mistakes. It's fine to do. It's how you fix them and how you deal with that is what counts. And I mean, this mascara transferring to the bottom lashes isn't really a mistake, it's inevitable, it's, it's gonna happen. Um, but I just wanted to point out that by including how we fix this, I think that's a really important part of, of makeup tutorials, is not to fix something off camera because you said that's what, not what you're gonna do, if that makes sense, and to actually include it in the video, I think it's really good. I'm then just going to go in and apply contour, and to do so, I'm going to use quite a warm shade, and this is Kryolan's Matte Eyeshadow in the shade Sahara, and I'm applying that on a crown brush S205 pointed blush brush, and I'm just... Right, everyone take notice of this contour, no matter what skin tone you are. I'm not talking about the shade, I'm talking about the technique, it's not a cream, it's not piled up on the face, it's a contour that's gonna be just as effective, if not more effective. Stippling it on first of all, but when first of all applying contour, I always like to apply it in a stippling fashion first of all, just to place the color correctly. So if I swirl the product back and forth too heavily or too much, it does actually disturb and deteriorate the formation of the foundation that has been set with powder. So I much prefer to stipple. That way you do not disturb the foundation for which... That's such a great point. You see all these videos of people piling on foundation and concealer, then using powder on top and, and buffing and buffing and buffing. And I just... I mean, you can watch every single one of my videos, reaction videos, the technique of, of that and, and the... Um, and how I imagine the texture to be on the skin in real light, not in studio lighting, makes me cringe. It makes me feel so uncomfortable. You have to be so delicate. You really do have to bear in mind texture and what tools you're using when you're doing makeup. Um, yeah. But I'm now going to go in with some of Charlotte Tilbury's lipstick in the shade Pillow Talk, which is a very similar colour to my natural lips. And I'm just applying this shade all over the lips. Now I want the lips to look a little bit lighter than this, but still remain the same shade. So I'm just going to go in with some of Beauty UK's lipstick in the shade Chelsea. And I'm applying that on a Zova 227 brush. And what I'm doing is just dabbing this on, first of all. Just to lighten it ever so slightly. And just merging everything together with a MAC 231 brush. And applying an additional amount. Now for highlighter, I'm going Let's talk about... Again, playing with shade, tone, texture, depth, everything like that. And that's quite a common thing you see a lot, people in light and, and light here. Great, it's great technique to make the lips look poutier. Um, yeah. And apply this loose pigment. This is by Belly Perry Cosmetics. And it is a very white, loose pigment. Very shimmery, very sparkly, and it's a fantastic highlighter. And I'm just applying it to the highest points of the cheekbones, first of all, on a Zoba 114 brush. I'm just stippling that on, just applying a little bit of it here, just to bring light to that. Now, in the original picture, Bella's skin was glowing. It looked gorgeous, although straight on, in some of the photographs, it looked quite matte. Now, I'm not going to apply too much of this, just a little bit of it, just to give me a glow and to lift the skin up ever so slightly, as it's very matte at the moment. And I add a tiny amount of it just to the centre of the nose just to bring up a little bit of light. Small amount of it on the chin. Now I'm applying quite a bit of it to the bridge of the nose. I absolutely love to do this. I love that slight sheen that the top of the nose gets. And also, if you have a protrusive brow bone like myself, a way of feminizing that and reducing the appearance of it is to add a lighter tone here or a shimmery tone there and here and slightly at the top of the bridge just to bring that area forward and apply a tiny bit of it in the center of the forehead small amount very faint amount of it underneath the brow bone and i'm taking a small amount of that through the forehead just to add a little bit of lift there and you can always go back in with your powder brush from before how incredibly thought through and um technical was that highlighter application it was slow it wasn't just like getting a brush and going wow highlight you know stripes all over the face it was almost customised to face shape. John was saying how putting it here feminises the face slightly, which if that's something you want is a great technique because traditionally men are known to have um, bolder brow bones and um, more protrusive. So to equal that out is actually something I do. You might see that my bridge of my nose is a lot lighter than like around the edges because I like to kind of 
bring that forward. Um, and that's something about highlighter that a lot of people don't do is personalize it to them. They see videos of people doing it like, oh, yo, you have to highlight here, you have to highlight here, you have to highlight here. Not everyone's face shape is the same. I say that quite a, a lot. So see, see what points of a face you really want to bring out. See where naturally catches light on your face. That's where you want to highlight. So that more or less summarizes this look. I'm now going to style my hair and add some jewels. So that more or less completes the look. I have had a lot of fun creating this look for you here today. I feel very fabulous, hot to trot, and I'm ready to go off out and shake my bootay, as they say in this century. And I very much hope that you have found the tips, the techniques, and the recommendations for which that I have made in today's film will either be useful, interesting, helpful, or beneficial. And once again, thank you so much for watching. And of course, take care. Bye. I mean, what is it? to say nothing really um, <laughs> that was absolutely incredible this is exactly why i make um the reaction videos because i find it very strange coming from a time in makeup where instagram didn't exist youtube didn't exist um this whole the makeup industry as it is now wasn't how it was back then when i see like tutorials on youtube or i see products being used in a really strange way it is kind of outrageous to me <laughs> that, that this is a way some people, that people follow this. And I know it's absolutely up to the individual how they want to do their makeup if they're just doing it for fun. But at the same time, I feel like there's people out there who really, really want to get into makeup. And the reason I do these videos and the reason I say at the beginning when I say, you know, makeup does have a theory is because of videos like this. You can clearly tell who is a makeup artist, who is an influencer. And the two are very, very different. Let me just tell you that now. The fashion industry and the YouTube, the kind of Instagram community, industry, sorry, are two completely separate things. So to see a tutorial like this that is beneficial, I feel like I learned 10 million things in that video that looks incredible, is realistic, that you can actually recreate at home without feeling like a dick from putting on too much product. It's so refreshing and it's so nice. And it actually leaves me with a positive feeling. When I do all these other reaction videos, you can see there's a rare few where I'm like, I liked that video, but I, I finish a video usually really pissed off. And it's not because I'm like, that's not how makeup should be done. It's because I feel like you're, everyone's being lied to. I feel like everyone feels like they have to do these certain steps of makeup. And I get so many messages on Instagram, comments on here from people saying they followed, you know, these tutorials and just felt like makeup wasn't for them and felt like if they didn't fit into this makeup industry or this Instagram social media community, because of the way makeup was being done. There's people like this. It brings back the fun into artistry. If your goal is the standard of social media, there's a lot of lying within social media. There's a lot of um, manipulation within social media because I get it. People are trying these like Instagram techniques and they're going out in, in the day and you know, in daylight and it looks terrible. And you think you're a failure at makeup because it doesn't look like how it does on social media. How it looks on social media isn't even how it looks in real life, let me just tell you that. So to have techniques that are realistic, enjoyable to use, just, I, I'm just, it's just so refreshing to see that and it actually kind of reminds me why I make these videos. Um, and it actually reminds me about what I loved about being a makeup artist. Sometimes doing these reaction videos and, and being like an influencer, because that's a separate job from makeup artistry, let me tell you that. It can kind of be, for me, kind of sometimes, um, I love it. I love connecting with people and I love educating, but it can be sometimes a little bit, for my artistry side, can be a little bit of a downer. Um, so to watch something like this kind of makes me want to grab a client and have them sit in a chair and, and do makeup again on that level. And that's how I want to feel when I watch tutorials. I don't want to sit there and be like, I don't want to bake. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I, I want to do this look. I want to try this look. It's, it's stunning. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you learned as much as I did in that video as well. As makeup artists or in any profession, if you feel like you can't learn anymore, I feel like you're done with that profession and it's not fun. You can check out my whole playlist of MUA Reacts to um, whoever up here. Don't forget to consider subscribing. Give this video a big thumbs up and I will see you very soon. Bye.